Hello, I'm hoping this is carrying on out into the ethers. This is Farah, Sister Farah here at Swords of St. Michael Network. And I want to welcome you to our regularly scheduled program, Sunday Night Formation. Tonight, we are continuing the 12 Steps of Humility and Pride on Loving God. And this evening, we are going to start into the Ladder of Pride. We have taken every single chapter. We have journaled. Here at Swords of St. Michael, we seek to present you with tools so that you have the ability for self-liberation, self-exorcism, and self-confidence in Christ that you can do what you need to do to get rid of whatever you need to get rid of, to clear the path and make a happy home for Jesus to live inside. So I want to welcome everyone live tonight. I usually do not do lives, but this is kind of exciting because for whatever reason, Jacob was volunteering tonight, so I didn't have my engineer. So we're live. Thank you so much to my moderators that are in the house. You guys can ask questions at the end if you'd like, because it's rare that I get to interact with my audience. I want to give a big shout out to dad, Russell Sr., who is celebrating his 65th birthday. Prayers for your happy birthday celebration. And guess what? It's time to pray, get ourselves into the chapter. So if you do not already have pencil and paper, get ready. This is going to be a very short, very fast, very brief lesson. We are on in chapter 11 and tonight we're going to be talking about levity of the mind and what is that we'll talk about that in just a second so sit tight give us a thumbs up if you've been here before and you happen to like this program subscribe if you can and click on that little bell for notifications as we go directly into praying and if you don't have your copy downloaded there is a link below you can download your free copy on a line so as they say, let's roll. In nome de Patri et Filio et Spiritu Sancto, sicura in principio et nunc et semper et secula seculorum. Amen. Sancte Michele Arcangele, defende nos in prelio, contra in dequitia min insidis diuboli esto presidium, impedit in ideus. Supplices te precamor tuque, princeps meletia celesti satan maliosque spiritus malignos. Qui ad perdition manamarum per vagantur in mundo divine virtute, in infernum de trude. Amen. Our study prayer by St. Ignatius of Loyola. Sushipe. Sushipe Domine, universum meam libertatem, acipe memoriam intellectum atque voluntatum omnem. Qui qui babio ver posideo, mihi large tu sesi tibi totum restitzuo, actuit prorsus voluntati trado gubernandum, amorem tuisum, cum gratia mihi dones, et divisum sati secaluit qui quam ultra posco. Amen. The Twelve Steps of Humility and Pride on Loving God. St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Chapter 11. Levity of mind, the second degree. The opposite of the eleventh degree of humility, short and sensible speech in subdued tone. For the monk who is careless about himself and unduly inquisitive about other people, looks up to some as his betters and looks down upon others as his inferiors. In some, he sees cause for envy, while others are the objects of his scorn. 
it thus happens that his mind, enervated by his habit of staring about him, is oppressed by no anxiety on its own account, now through pride soars to the heights and then sinks through envy to the depths. He shows at one moment a sulky acquiescence in his own wickedness, at another a childish delight in his own excellence. In the former he exhibits his weakness, in the latter his vanity, in both his pride. For it is love of his own excellence that gives him distress when others surpass him, and joy when he surpasses them. This unbalanced disposition shows itself in speech, sometimes brief and bitter, sometimes full and feeble, alternately jocose and doleful, and always silly. Compare, if you please, these two earliest degrees of pride and the two highest degrees of humility. And see if the last one of these latter does not repress curiosity and the one before it levity. You will find the same contrast if the other degrees are similarly compared. But now let us go on to the study of the third degree with, however, falling into it. So, <clears throat> I promise this was going to be a short one. I'm so glad you could all join me. It's so nice to see everybody already here live. Thank you so much. And as I said earlier, happy birthday, Russell Sr. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for the compliments. Welcome, Sean. Welcome, everyone. And thank you, moderators, for coming. I have to take a sip of water. Mm. As some of you know, I've had an, a little bit of a sore throat because these holidays boy just kicked out the cold season in me this formation chapter really speaks to a lot of the temptation that we have every day every week whether we are in an office situation in a business situation where saint bernard focuses on the monks and focuses on the religious formation that they must embrace if in order to get along to walk towards jesus to become greater in virtue, grow in holiness, we as Christians, we have the opportunity every day to put away those things that don't serve us and only serve our pride. A sense of vengeance, a sense of entitlement. And if you look at this channel, you look at some of the videos, exorcism, deliverance and healing is all about stepping back being humble, seeking Christ above all things, and trusting in your faith that whatever you need, he will get it for you and bring it to you. You, however, must step into it and walk forward. So let's sum up this lesson because this one, it seems so simple, it seems so easy, however, I'm as guilty as anybody. I've got a potty mouth when I drive. And I'm constantly trying to zip it. Why? Am I comparing myself? I don't think so. I just know I'm a better driver. Hello. <laughs> it's not good. We're not supposed to compare ourselves. But it happens. All right? And this is the levity of mind. This is the jovial way that we go about and constantly look at how I do things and how other things are done. And we take great delight in showing people how really, shall we say, ignorant, stupid. We compare ourselves constantly. It is our human nature. It is part of our fallen nature that this is, this is, 
This is in all of us, and we fight it daily. It's not easy because the evidence is there that not only do we live in a fallen world, our brothers and sisters are just as crusty, rusty, and fallen as all of us. So when we look at the levity of mind and the undying inquisitiveness, I call it being nosy, a busybody. How many of you, how many of us here have gone into a church situation, gone into a work situation, and once there, everybody's gossiping about how many kids you have, who are you married to, who are you dating, who are you sleeping with, who's your family, do I know all about you? Then they're going to go tell two friends and tell two friends and tell two friends and on it, on it goes. That is the unrelenting inquisitiveness that leads to nothing but unease. It leads us, it leads us to unhappiness and anxiety. And I think if we look at this monk's lesson from a purely Christian perspective, we're looking at the desire and the nature to be loved and approved of through pride. Now, since this is part of our nature, it may be something that we're going to struggle with. And I know, I know a few of you have emailed me and, and sent me messages saying this is just really hard to do. I agree it's hard to do. If it was easy, don't you think everybody would be doing it? Everybody would have it. We would all be loving on each other, enjoying life. And it's just, it's one of those things that when we learn to love our brother as we love ourselves. This constant snoopiness into what he does and who he's doing it with and then holding him to a higher degree and higher standard than we hold ourselves. That's got to stop. And yes, wanting to be loved is so hard to stop. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved. There is nothing wrong with needing to be loved. It's how we go about it that we need to keep an eye on, that we need to keep in check. So when we unpack this simple levity of mind and think about how pride absolutely delights you know if we're going to erase pride how does it delight in everything we compare ourselves to cars jobs i mean just thinking of my past mm. welcome jennifer i'm sorry this is live welcome jennifer good to see you i'm sorry Prayers for everyone watching that is struggling with any kind of cold, flu, or COVID. My prayers are going to be with you tonight, folks. Back to the focus of this anxiety. This anxiety that we get is caused by a level of pride in making sure that everybody knows how good we are how on point we are, how on target we are, and uh, they're just, they're falling short of the ideal, right? They have absolutely lost perspective of what it is to walk toward Christ with Christ. I'm guilty as everybody. So, in this... Uh, and this inquisitiveness, when we talk about being inquisitiveness and snooping into, I don't care if you're looking at, oh, thank you so much, Ash. Good to see you. Ashley's here and she's giving me compliments. I had to thank her, folks. When we look at our neighbors and go, oh my gosh, what a filthy yard. Or, oh my gosh, can you believe they got that? Oh yeah, I want a deck like that. As soon as the opportunity in our mind arises, we're coveting things that we don't even need we may not even want we may not even be able to use however this levity of mind brings us to a place where we think well it should be ours it causes us anxiety why can't we have it 
And Anne in chat has a really good point about this specific topic because when we think about comparing ourselves, when we think about the things that we need to point out that are so inferior, because of our desire to be loved and to be thought of as good and thought of ourselves as something special, there is a concept, welcome Colin, there's a concept that maybe we haven't been loved enough. Now, in our Christian walk, in trying to figure out, oh, thank you, Ashley, God bless you. Thank you, I just got a super chat, had to comment on it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, sweet lady. Always. When we look at that anxiety that comes from not being loved enough, this in a way I have to tell you that this not being loved enough or not being bonded to a parent because you were not given that sort of love that basically supports your growth, supports your connections, supports your communications and relationships, that takes you on, uh, it takes you into a spiral of self-loathing and comparisons and anxiety. And granted, that is a really difficult place to be when you have not been loved enough, when you have not had that basis and you're doing your best to form yourself to the Christian life. I have to say that number one, if you know that you haven't been loved enough, if you know that you do not have that basis with which to draw from and give, even if you've never known who Christ was or what the sacrifice was, if you take a look at a beautiful piece of art depicting Christ on the cross and you look at that and understand the unexplainable, the absolute, the absolute sacrifice of something that we can't even understand, this is where that pain and that loss and that abandonment belongs at the foot of the cross. There is nothing greater than that love as Christ explained to us than to lay down your life for another. So in our brokenness, in our brokenness, in our in our love that we desire to receive we cannot receive from humans what we refuse from God and I'm going to say that again we cannot receive from man what we refuse from God if we do not allow God to love us. If we not cannot accept this beautiful origin of us, of who we are, of where we came from, of where we're going, if we can't accept that, how are we ever, ever going to understand, accept, be able to sift through the imperfection of human love. Human love is so full of flaws and conditions and fears and jealousies and angers and hatred. And it goes right to this whole chapter, levity of mind. Our mind goes in a million places when we think we love somebody or we think somebody loves us. Only God, through the Holy Trinity, through breathing us into existence by the Most Holy Ghost, only through the sacrifice of His Son. That, that is great love. 
That is great love. And anyone, if anyone's in the audience and needs prayer, please post it. And I will gladly pray for you tonight. When we, when we look, when we look at, when we look at him and the sacrifice that he's made for us, and there's a question in chat, how can we love him more orderly, more properly? How can we show him? We love the unlovable in both our neighbor and ourselves. How do we love? By, instead of judging them and comparing them, forgiving them. Forgiving them. Say a little prayer for them. There are a myriad ways that we can show and step out of our comfort level, out of our pride, out of, out of everything that we believe we're entitled to in order to let our guard down for 30 seconds or a minute to love someone else the way Christ told us and showed us to love. So you've got my prayers. You've got my prayers, ladies and gentlemen out here. The last thing I really, really wanted to say, because I know a lot of people in the audience and some of the other, the other formation, we, we equate so many things with our culture and uh, things that we touch and we see and we feel because we're very much sensate beings. And when we think about anxiety and the desire for knowledge and the envy, I had to bring up this, this song. Does anybody remember Jesse's Girl? I wish I had Jesse's Girl. When you look in the grocery store, when you look at people getting donuts after church. When you look at people in their cars, they're looking at something, saying, gosh, I wish I had that. Gosh, I wish I had that. Instead of thanking God right where they are and saying, thank you, God. It is enough. Your grace that you give me, that you love me, that I'm still breathing a complete, a complete storm above ground. I'm still breathing and you still want me here. Be gentle. Be gentle with yourselves. Let's not compare. And let's get to tonight's meditation for this chapter. So in our practical application notes... What we're going to do this week, this is a really light week. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for joining us. When we look at our meditation in, I ask everyone that's been here before, please pull out your journal so that we can go over what our focus is going to be at in this 12 steps of the ladder of pride. And let's take some notes on how we catch ourselves looking at others with either their clothing, their cars, their possessions. Maybe it is how they speak, how they walk, how they talk. Maybe it's the people they know and you're comparing yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to journal ways that we can prevent and prepare for ourselves those opportunities. So because we just want to avoid comparison. We don't want to be anxious. We don't want to be sad. We don't want to be greedy. We don't want to be needy. We don't want to have inflated pride and ego. So, you know, how can we do that? Simply put, simply put. They always say forewarn is forearmed. I think that, I think that we can all step into this. We can all, this, this is one that we can embrace. This is one that we can understand that calls us forward, this this levity, this levity of our mind that just runs amok the minute we wake up. And whether we're watching the news or we're watching entertainment, whatever it is that we're thinking about, as we know, our thoughts can become a habit. And a habit 
can become a ha behavior. And a behavior can either glorify God or destroy our soul. So I want us this week to really think about ways that we can prevent any of these opportunities from rising. And as I've said in other formation shows, we just want to focus on one thing. We, we can't tackle the whole mountain. We can't expect to get the whole mountain down. This is a lot of dirt we're moving here. Heavy lifting time. So let's just maybe write down two or three ways that we can prepare for those opportunities so that we're not standing in line at Walmart and thinking, well, at least my pants aren't that tight. It's like, oops. We're not supposed to compare ourselves like that. Pray for that woman. I would not walk up to her and say, um, excuse me, your panty lines are showing. That is not appropriate. However, a little prayer that somebody can tell her that her behavior is not ladylike. There are so many hurting people. There are so many lost people. And no one, no one is reaching out to them. My, fav my favorite, my favorite entire Bible passage. The harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. How do we know? How do we know the opportunity is there for us? How do we know that that opportunity is waiting for us? Without a doubt, God will give you that surety to approach someone with love. Other than that, be careful. You never know. So this Bible verse, if you have already downloaded your copy, it's going to look like this here, you know, just like that, downloaded from the internet. It is not going to have this Bible verse in it. I love this Bible verse, Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient, love is kind, love is, you know, it does not envy, does not count it, uh, you know, love bears all things, hopes all things. It's one of my favorite. So that's why I put it down, because I want us all to be gentle with each other this week. I want us all to know that in our desire to follow Christ and to be more Christ-like, we must espouse the things that we ourselves are trying to give. And I think that if, just if, we can take the time to be gentle with ourselves, we can start being more gentle with other people. And we can learn that not everyone, not including myself, you know, I'm not where I want to be. But I can keep trying and I can keep putting the effort in so that Jesus knows I'm doing my best to go where he needs me to be, where he calls me to be. I pray that if you are not Christian, you are considering baptism. If you need help securing a Bible, if you need prayer, I'd like you to post below. Um, I'm really hoping that if you like this, if you'd like to support us, there's a link for Patreon, which I will be doing many interesting private videos this year. I'm just getting rolling on that. You can become a Patreon subscriber by the month or one time donation. You can always send me a book of stamps because I send stuff all over. And the best thing of all, if you'd like to pray for Sword of St. Michael and for myself, Farrah Rose, Sister Farrah, if you'd like to pray for me, that would even um, put a bigger smile on my face. Thank you all. Thank you so much, live members of the audience. Um, prayers for you, Sean, Anne, who have asked for prayers. God bless you. You'll be in my prayers tonight. Never forget, the battle's already been won. And hopefully this channel is here to help you fight the fight and win it right. So I want to tell you, God bless you. God be with you. May his face shine his beautiful countenance on you and give you the greatest peace you've ever experienced loving Jesus Christ. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Colin, Russell, and Lori. God bless. And until later this week, good night.